Good evening and welcome to the Crypt School's annual prize giving 2020. I'd like to pay a warm welcome to our viewers who consist of governors, teachers, support staff, parents, Cryptians, old Cryptians and of course our prize winners. Firstly I would like to thank Ming Green for all the organisation of the prizes and the event this evening. It is right that we celebrate the success of our students and the group that will receive prizes this evening for their effort and attainment are representation of the success of the school as a whole. This year we have narrowed the awarding of prizes to those who are open to the whole school, the sixth form, our levers and cups. Although this year has been challenging, where staff and students have had to embrace the extra demands which online education has brought, it has still been a fulfilling year. There are many students who could have been selected to receive the recognition that this particular group of students are receiving this evening. You have clearly stood out amongst the crowd and I congratulate you on your successes. For those moving on to the next stage of their life, whether it be the apprenticeship, art, foundation course, university or starting a career, I wish you all the very best for the future. The programme this evening will consist of the Chairman of Governors, Richard James, the musical item from Alice Groom, Year 13, A-level music student, playing clarinet concerto movement three, final by Carl Weber on her clarinet, accompanied by Mr. Christopher Boodle on the piano. Headmaster, Nicholas Dyer and his report, the school choir for Jerusalem, and then I will be reading out the prize winners. Our guest speaker with saying a few words with David Waboso, former Cryptian, and also our guest speaker thanks will be done by Matt Vey and Nadine. We will finish with a school song and I hope everybody will have an enjoyable evening. Many thanks. Good evening and welcome to all parents, students and staff. In particular, I would like to offer a very special welcome to David Wabosa, CBE, our guest speaker tonight. David was educated at the Crip School in the 1970s and I'm delighted he is participating in this extraordinary virtual prize giving tonight. Fortunately, he has been a guest speaker in more normal times. Our first virtual prize giving as a school, and I would sincerely hope our last. This year, as every year, we take this opportunity to celebrate the success of so many of our students. Despite our school being subject to COVID restrictions for so many months, the headmaster and school staff pursued an approach of business as usual, but not as normal. The teaching staff followed the curriculum with a mix of online teaching, set work, and of course, marking. Teaching staff were learning too. Technology, that most had had little experience with, was rapidly acquired and used to buy, provide the best experience we possibly could for our students. Almost every student took maximum advantage of the school offering and early anecdotal information suggests that the vast majority of students are where we might have expected them to be. I, as chairman, wish on behalf of all trustees to thank the headmaster and his team for all they have done to ensure students did not lose out. In addition, I would especially wish to thank all no our non-teaching staff who have done so much to ensure we were COVID ready when we fully reopened. The school has indeed been open throughout for some students and the headmaster and many of his team were in the school most days. In particular, Sue Wales, who has more roles than I could possibly mention, and Hazer Baldwin, a state manager, both delayed their well-earned retirement to support the school through this extraordinary period in our history. And to the students, a huge congratulation. You have worked so hard, despite these extraordinary circumstances, to achieve so much. Well done to every single one of you.
very warm welcome to you all. I'm delighted uh, that we can hold our annual speech day and prize giving uh, this evening, albeit of course this year virtually. Uh, may I start by thanking all those who have contributed to tonight's virtual prize giving, to our distinguished guest of honour, David Obosa, or Kryptian, uh, to Mr Julian Whitaker, our Director of Music, and his talented musicians for providing the music for tonight, uh, to Mr Stanlake and, of course, Sue Wales for their organisation of tonight's event, and to Dean Baldwin for his work in putting all the different parts uh, together into one uh, presentation. We live through extraordinary times, have we not, and indeed continue to do so. And here at the Crypt I've been immensely proud uh, of the work and contribution that both staff and students have made to the school, to their communities, to their families during the period of school closure after March, and of course the national lockdown as well. And as you all know, uh, the school closed on the 20th of March, Examinations for year 11 and 13 were cancelled and all but the children of key workers remained at home. Yet our school continued throughout that period to function. Students were taught remotely by their teachers, their learning continued and the school through the work of our wonderfully committed pastoral teams continued to look after our pupils, uh, both those in school and those at home throughout that period and our commitment then to provide an outstanding academic education within a strong embrace of pastoral care, which was the vision after all of our founders, John and Joan Cook, continued despite the closure of the school. We also supported our year 11 and 13 examination cohorts, who should be very proud indeed of their success in their GCSE and A-levels. And we supported, of course, year 13 and year 11 as they progressed onto the next stage of their lives for year 13 on to university, apprenticeships, training or employment for example. And this evening is of course all about celebrating success and achievement, celebrating the sustained effort and commitment of all our prize winners tonight. Tonight we celebrate also the success and achievement of students in other areas too such as in sport and music and drama and we also celebrate and thank those who've contributed so much to their schools and to their communities, to charity and through these and other endeavours to enriching the lives of many, many others. And this year in particular, we also use the occasion of speech night and prize giving to celebrate and to thank everyone who has contributed to our school, to the lives of their families, to their communities, in whatever way over the last year and particularly over the period after March. There were many, many acts of kindness and generosity that Cryptians undertook across the months after March. Cryptians helped others as they always do. They raised money for good causes such as the NHS and they were there to support their loved ones. They were all resilient in the face of an extraordinary national and global pandemic. Many of our Crypt community of people's staff are Cryptians and governors, for example, as well as families took part in the Ben Brown fundraising run from Gloucester to Istanbul and back some four and a half thousand kilometres I believe initiated by our director of sport Mr Bowden, uh, Ben's family and friends that fundraising run raised thousands of pounds for Papyrus the mental health and young people's charity and the run also helped to raise awareness of mental health in young people and it also brought people together at a time of isolation. Ben was one, of course, of our old Cryptians who very sadly took his own life. He was a wonderfully talented student who was studying at Loughborough University and was due to join the army this autumn. His tragic death reminds us all of the pressures and anxieties many young people feel today, especially at this time, and our need to offer them all the support they require and accept them for who they are. Other individuals at school responded in remarkable ways to help out during the lockdown. Jack Keveron, year 13, uh, he prepared NHS laptops for home use so GPs could carry on their work from home. Elliot Hanley, now in year 9, his sister made face masks which they sold, donating the money over £1,000 to the school's local charity appeal. Harry McCoy had his hair shaved off for charity, raising £600. And my thanks to all our Crip families 
who contributed to our local charity appeal that raised three and a half thousand pounds and the school matched that fund and was able to present a cheque to five local charities who were very grateful to receive that money in such a difficult period. We pay tribute then to all those within our Crip community who helped others during the most intense phase of the pandemic. We also thank others in the NHS, in our emergency services, in schools and care homes. We thank them for their work and sacrifice and remember of course all those whose lives have been tragically touched by COVID-19, those who have died, lost loved ones. Remember too that the pandemic is clearly still evident today and we must all recommit ourselves to being responsible for both ourselves and for others to a key crit value. Our pupils have always valued their school and their education and now more than ever I hope they realise the important role their school plays in educating them and helping them support their development their well-being and supporting them as they progress into young adults responsible ultimately for themselves. Our remote learning off to all peoples after March worked very well indeed and my enormous thanks to the teachers for all they did to make that possible but being at home learning in front of a, a screen cannot replicate the enormous value that coming into school each day brings being with friends receiving expert guidance and support from academic and pastoral staff alike, socialising with others, being part of something bigger than oneself, being part of a community, developing new skills, taking part in something new, learning, developing and progressing with others. School is one of the most formulative experiences of our lives. And in my start of the year assembly, I urged everyone at the Crypt to make the very best of their time here. And our prize winners then represent the achievements and successes of the whole school community. They also represent the commitment to excellence and that we all aspire to at the Crypt. And they represent the responsibility we accept as a school and as individuals within school to the welfare of others and to the values and aspirations that lie at the heart of our school ethos. Values and aspirations which have never been more important than they are now and I'm sure will continue to be so in the future. Despite then the very disrupted nature of the last school year, we can celebrate much nonetheless, not least the marvellous manner in which everyone connected to the school rose the unprecedented challenges of the period leading up to and after the closure of the school in March. Students in year 11 and 13 worked with the support and guidance of their teachers incredibly hard throughout last year, and they achieved a very strong and credible set of examination outcomes derived as we know from the centre assessed grades and 70% available results were A star to B with 94% at A star to C a really tremendous achievement and the result of two years of hard work and study on the part of the students supported by their teachers and other staff. Our Year 11 GCSE students achieved equally well with nearly 40% of grades at 9 to 8, 60% uh, at 9 to 7 and 82% at 9 to 6. These results enabled our Year 13 leavers to progress on to their chosen destinations, first class universities, fantastic apprenticeships, training and employment. We need to remind ourselves that results such as that don't just happen, they require the nurturing of young minds and that nurturing is carried out by our superb teachers, all specialists in their fields, all extremely knowledgeable about their subject and passionate about their pupils progress and success. It also requires of course the hard work of each and every student and no doubt the continued support of their families too and I was a very proud headmaster on both GCSE and A level results days and the students should in no way feel that they did not deserve their individual examination successes this summer. And the success of our school in many areas, its strong reputation in the community, its supportive, inclusive its accepting and tolerant culture has meant that more and more young people wish to attend the school to be educated here both in year 7 and year 12 and today we have nearly 1,050 young people in year 7 to 13, 300 in the 6th form and almost 300 girls in year 7, 8, 9, 12 and 13. People role growing as it has been over the last decade is perhaps the clearest indication of the success of our school and a tribute to the hard work and dedicated support of everyone connected to the school. 
and that growth has enabled the school to invest more money into its staffing once more, additional teaching science and maths, drama, English, history and politics, a new administrator uh, and the appointment of a second and much needed pastoral support worker to help the work of our pastoral teams. Despite the lockdown after March, the school witnessed great success in sport with hundreds of pupils represented the school in the full range of sport, netball, football, rugby, basketball, handball to name but a few and there were a huge range of other enriching activities and trips and visits, Duke of Edinburgh, music and drama, production of Greece, debating society, chess, science and maths clubs uh, and so on. Yet the close of the school also meant the cancellation of over 30 trips, including our annual ski trip, the U9 trip to Cres in France, uh, amongst many enriching opportunities that are so important to our young people. There is, though, something for each and every pupil and student in the sixth form to get involved with, and that involvement helps build character, develop skills and personal qualities that marks uh, crit pupils out as exceptional individuals. In our careers education programme and our commitment to teaching citizenship and exposing peoples to new ideas and values of ours and other societies helps ensure that our leavers are well prepared for the next stage of their lives. Of course that next stage of their life, be it university, further education, ultimately the world of work is the past that generations of Cryptians have taken after their school lives are completed, a, a path that may take them far away from Gloucester their homes and families. Yet wherever they are in the world, they will always be part of the Crip family. And it's here that we're very proud to have the continued support, generosity and friendship of the old Cryptian club uh, and old Cryptian such as David Wabosa, for example. The old Cryptian bursary fund, for example, enables students to purchase items that they may not have been able to afford or be able to further their interest in sport, for example, or even support their travel into school. This last year it was, of course, disappointing not to reunite with our old Cryptians at our annual Founders' Day uh, or annual meal. However, leaving the school at the end of year 11 or 13 doesn't mean an end to one's Crypt journey. It means journeying on within the wider Crypt community. And we wish to work to further strengthen that wider Crypt network to help support Cryptians at whatever stage of life and whatever stage their Crypt journeys are. We were start saddened to hear of the death last year of old Cryptian Anthony Isles, yet such is the fond place that the school has with so many OCs that we were delighted and overwhelmed to be left a very large legacy from Anthony's estate in the United States of America. With that money now invested into the Anthony Isles Endowment Fund, we will, and future generations of Cryptians will, gener uh, benefit uh, from his generosity. It is, I believe, a privilege to be educated here at the Crips School. I believe our students are fortunate to be able to attend this school. And for me, it is an honour and privilege to be the 48th headmaster of this school. Of course, with great privilege comes responsibility. And our students here understand that the privilege of being educated here bestows upon them a need to be responsible, not only for themselves, to their school, but also to their families and communities. As teachers, as educators, as governors of the school, we take on responsibility for the well-being and development of others. And there's no greater responsibility than being a parent, of being a teacher, of being a governor of a school, for we are charged with the welfare of others. And we expect our students at the Crypt to take on responsibility for others whilst at school. We expect them to develop that sense of wider responsibility that goes beyond that to themselves and their families and extends to taking on responsibility for others too. And at school we offer students opportunities to develop their understanding of their world, to contribute to school life, to lead, to take part, to become responsible for oneself and for others. And that is, I think, one of the most important founding values of the school and has been, of course, of paramount importance over the last six months. I know that our talented Year 13 prize winners and leavers will go on to make a real difference to the lives, not just of themselves, but of others too, as they progress through the rest of their lives. I know then that everyone connected with the school can look back proudly on the academic year 2019-2020 and how we rose collectively to the great challenge of this, our time. And equally, I think we can look forward to this year and indeed the next few years with great confidence in our resilience as a school, 
in our commitment to providing holistic education for every young person, to further strengthening our school as a centre of outstanding educational provision within an inclusive and accepting school community based on our key values of script school life and which are derived from our vision that all pupils and staff can flourish in everything that they do. I think we're hugely fortunate at the school to have a talented and committed set of staff and governors to lead the school. We retain the support of our parents and others within the local community. We've shown that we can respond quickly and well to challenging circumstances. And above all, we're confident in the values, traditions and ethos of our school. And the excellent exam outcomes and the success of our prize winners here this evening is merely the tip of an iceberg of success that we have at school. And in joining the school in year seven or indeed in year 12, as many students now do, young men and women that begin their distinctive Crip School journey, a journey which I believe prepares them fantastically well uh, for their future lives. They develop the ability uh, to think critically and for themselves, to overcome adversity and to keep going, to work in groups, to lead and to serve, uh, to be able to undertake a broad and varied programme of study, to keep on developing and learning to help support others, to contribute to charity and to their school and local communities, to really care not only about their own success but of that of others too. So very well done uh, to this year's prize winners. You should all be rightly proud of your achievements as I know I am and your families are too. For those who have now left the school I wish you well on your onward journeys and for those of us committed to the future success of this school, this Centre of Educational Excellence in Gloucester, your success both now and in the future will continue to inspire and inform our work here at the Crip School over the course of both this year and indeed many years to come. Thank you very much. Now we come to the prizes and, and the awarding of them. We will start with the prizes that are open to the whole school. The Michael Newth Prize for Languages goes to Nabil El Bark. The Lower School History Prize to Naomi Pete. The CT Dean Music Prize to Marcus Kong. The London Old Cryptians Prize for All Round Effort, Moyne Muller. The Jeff Robbins Memorial Prize for Practical Work in Geography, William Cook. Kendrick Prize for Initiative, Elliot Smith. The Colin Ewan Memorial Prize for Drama, Bertie Bird. The Richard Worrell Prize for Drama, Joseph Talamay. 
the School Art Prize, Jackson McLean, and the Stuart Haightley Prize for Sustained Effort, Chloe Thornley. We now move on to the prizes that are open to the sixth form. The school's captain prizes go to Jamie Evans and Amy Johnson. The J.F. Acton Prize for Mathematics, the Hodges Prize for Chemistry, both go to Sean Lavelle. The Bailey Prize for History, the Herbert Byard Prize for Outstanding Merit, the Government and Politics and the Psychology Prize all go to Adam Baldwin. The Herbert Byard Prize for Outstanding Merit both go to James Hunt and Ben Thomas. The Alec Eason Prize and the Henley Memorial Prize for English Literature both go to George McKenz. The Howie Prize for Physics, the Townsend Prize, Pembroke College and Academic Excellence and for Further Maths all go to Damon Marlowe. The EPQ Prize for an Innovative Project goes to Marcus McDonnell. The Art Prize goes to Lewis Meredith Wilkes. The Biology Prize goes to Ben Thomas and the Geography Prize presented by Mrs Milner and Philosophy and Ethics also go to Ben Thomas. The Business Studies Prize goes to Alia Cadodia. The Computer Science DT Prize and the Dane Joan Cook Exhibition Prize all go to Hannah Hughes. The English Language Prize goes to Olivia Selway and the French Prize to Samuel Rabchev. German Prize goes to Lewis Cole, Sports Studies Prize James Dobson and the Niblet Scholarship Prize to Emma Waits Knowles. And finally, Henley Scholarship for English goes to Georgia Coopland. We now move on to the awards and cups to individuals throughout the school. The Arnold Cup for Creative Writing and the Art Cup awarded by Hilary Dyer Price both go to Rostrum McNiven. The Tawa Cup for Community Service goes to Amber Jackman. The Fletcher Cup for All-Round Achievement in Sport, Sam Higgs. The Tony Coates Memorial Cup in Rugby, Oliver Clark. The Sports Cup for Girls' Contribution to Sport, Hannah Hughes. The AIW Trophy for Outstanding Effort and Contribution in Sport goes to Henry Ansey. The Chapman Trophy for Creative Work in DT, sponsored by North Haven, goes to Xavier Cleland. Jeff Robbins Memorial Trophy for Involvement in School Activities to Ben Bayliss. The SOFAB Sports Cup for Outstanding Contribution to the Local Community, Jack Keverin. The Food Technology Prize, Matthew Brooks. The Outstanding Contribution to Brass Playing, Roan Clayton. The Contribution to School Choral Work and the Paul Sargent Stagecraft Cup go to Rachel Kirby. The Charles Lepper Cup for All Round Contribution to Drama goes to Jamie Evans. The Wycliffe Trophy for Technical Achievement to Manaf Patel. The Laurie McLeod Memorial Cup and ICT goes to Jimin Lee. The John Grafell Memorial Cup for Work in ICT goes to Oluwatomize Ayada. The Paul James Economics Cup goes to Jamie Ewers. The Maths Olympia Cup Gold Cup goes to Freddie Jones. The Hugh Rowe Plate for Public Speaking Honour goes to Ibrahim Ahmed. The Amanda Wilmot Cup for Outstanding Linguistic Achievement goes to Jack Evans. The Science Cup for Year 7 goes to Sally Dagger. The Science Cup in Year 8 goes to Beatrice Norwood. The Junior Engineering Cup goes to Oliver Smith. The Senior Engineering Cup to Hayden Bradley. The Chess Cup to Jack Zhang. The Seymour Cup for Women in Science and Engineering to Tanola Idoa and the Rachel Jackson Cup goes to Amy Johnson. That concludes the distributions of this evening's prizes. Thank you. Hello, my name is Matt May, the current head boy at the Crypt. I would like to just take a second to introduce our guest speaker for this year's virtual prize giving. David Waboso first joined the Crypt in 1968 alongside his brother. He remembers his time at the school well, excelling academically and has fond memories winning honours in rugby and breaking school sprinting records. After leaving the crypt, he obtained degrees in engineering from Coventry and Imperial College. He later went on to have a very unsuccessful career in civil engineering, where he applied one technology to UK Railway. From there, he held position in government as an executive director of the Strategic Rail Authority, 
overseeing multi-billion pound cross-industry programmes. He was later awarded a CBE in 2014 for all his work on the London Underground, updating and modernising many lines and stations. Thank you to David for being here today, and I hope you all enjoy the rest of the evening. Good evening, everybody. And what an honour it is to be asked to give this speech to you at the prize giving day for the Crypt School, a school that I have hugely fond memories of from my time there as a student between 1968 and 1974, which of course seems a very long time ago now. Um, I'm sorry I can't be with you in person because of the rather challenging times we're living in. I'm giving you this speech from uh, the study of my house in Essex, um, where I have a lot of photographs, as you can see on the wall. And some of those photographs are actually from my time at the crypt because it's a school I have hugely fond memories of. And those memories are because they helped shape me and helped me grow and develop both as a person, academically, and also in my sporting career. All of these things meant a lot to me. Um, and uh, for example, at rugby, uh, which of course was hugely important to, uh, then at the Crypt, and I'm sure is now, um, we had some. We had a great team. Uh, my brother Paul was the uh, captain of the first fifteen. Uh, we had a had some really tough games actually against some of the best sides in the West Country and in Wales. And uh, I always remember, you know, those were the games that defined you as a person. You know, it was quite easy playing at home in front of uh, friendly supporters. You know, against a side that you would uh, probably quite easily beat. But you went to some of these tough schools away, and they were very testing. And those are the ones that uh, really showed you, you know, showed your mettle. And we had some famous victories, I remember. But whether we lost or won, the important point was we competed well and we prepared well. And um, I think that was a big lesson in life for me, that uh, whether it was the preparation and the training you put in for rugby or the preparation and training you put in for your your exams, which, of course, the pressure seemed to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you went through the, the school. Uh, those pressures um, helped shape you and helped prepare you for life in the future. Because uh, I, I didn't realise at the time, of course, I kept thinking, gosh, you know, these exams are so difficult, so much pressure. I'd rather be out kicking a ball, the sun's shining. But no, you had to get your head down and you know, study your physics and your friction theory and your Pythagoras theorem and all those things that, you know, you know as a young kid, you really would rather not study. Um, but those, that preparation prepared you for life because whether you go on to become a, a doctor, an engineer, a lawyer, whether you go to an apprenticeship, whether you go into commerce and business, whatever you do in life, um, it will be tough. And it's, a, you know, there's a lot of competition out there. And uh, the, the values of hard work, teamwork, preparation, fitness of both mind, body and soul are, are all hugely important and helped prepare me for the degrees I did and the professional career I undertook with professional exams. And of course, just in normal work where you're often asked at short notice to prepare presentations, you know, do things that to a very high quality and you just have to drop everything and you have to just really be on the ball. So, you know, and also where, wherever I went in the world, I had a career that took me around the world and also around the country. I was able to walk into any rugby club and say proudly that I was at one of the best rugby schools in the West Country. And I was always welcomed with open arms and I was able to make friends wherever I lived and worked. So these are things that I look back with huge fondness. And of course, there was personal adversity when I was at the crypt as well. You know, my father, uh, who's Nigerian, uh, and uh, my Gloucester mother were, uh, we, we grew up in Gloucester, but we went back to uh, Nigeria in the 60s to where my father was working as a doctor and we got caught up in the Nigerian Civil War so we we left there um, you know it's very traumatic time because there's a lot of fighting and uh, terrible things going on we left there towards the end of that war and we that's when I came into the crypt actually in 1968 and um, I have to say I think the crypt was a great place to be at that time because I was given uh, structure I was given support I made friends that I have to this day um, and uh, it helped enormously for me to readjust to life after what was quite a traumatic period as a young man. And I often talk about resilience, actually, and how important it is to be resilient as you go through life, because life is not plain sailing. There will be knocks. There will be uh, things that hit you and hurt you. Um, and, you know, the important thing is not that those happen, because they will. The important thing is how will you react? 
And I think having those values that I learned at the crypt have helped me enormously as I've developed through my personal and professional life. And I would say to all of you that you are at a great, great uh, institution, the crypt. Um, it's a great place. It's a great school. And I think the values that you learn at the school, the hard work you go through the school, the teamwork, the dedication to the values of integrity, of, of, of humility, consideration for others. Um, these are all things I think that will help you as you shape and with no doubt will, will be very successful careers. So I just finish by wishing you huge congratulations for those of you who are going to win prizes today. Um, I wish I could be with you in person. I hope I'm asked back again when I could meet you all face to face. But in the meantime, I do hope this message finds you very well. And uh, I can only finish by saying vivat scholat cryptiensis and please stay safe. Goodbye. We would like to thank David Waboso for his wonderful, inspiring talk, which is especially needed during these difficult and challenging times. We sincerely hope that we'll be able to invite you back again. We were so not pretty and sick. We were